and this is a construction site here in Davenport, Florida, 20 miles from Orlando. And this is all you see. This is how many construction sites across Florida look right now. And that's because there's a growing movement underway to draw attention to the consequences of a controversial immigration bill that makes it harder to work or hire without papers in that state. It's 9 a.m. Usually at this time, there's a lot of people here working, a lot of noise and loud Mexican music. This is what you hear today. So it is happening. And it's not just construction workers. Some truckers are refusing to make deliveries in the state. I don't know about you guys, but my truck will not be going to Florida. They're boycotting new penalties and restrictions on migrant workers, and people are organizing to fight against them. El gobernador de Florida, DeSantis. That was a construction site in Miami. The man speaking was talking about how Senate Bill 1718 will make it a felony to work without papers. So I'm going to translate it for you. And he's saying it's going to be impossible for them to work without papers. Impossible. And what he's requesting is that do you have 300 people, 300 white people, 300 citizen white people to do sheetrock, framing, electricity, conduits, everything. And now? Undocumented workers are having to figure out how life after Senate Bill 1718 might look. So let's unpack this new piece of legislation, its potential impact on immigrants in Florida and beyond, and the reaction playing out across the state. So last week, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill imposing wide-ranging restrictions on undocumented immigrants in Florida into law. And it's expected to take effect on July 1st. Here we go, guys. Governor signed off on state law by signaling national implications. Uh, it is causing huge, huge problems, and it's going to get a lot worse this week with the expiration of Title 42. In less than two months, Governor Ron DeSantis' sweeping immigration laws will take effect. Includes more penalties for businesses employing undocumented workers. The governor says it's an effort to fight migration from the southern border. His stated goal is to restrict the flow of undocumented immigrants into the state. And the rules go like this. Employers would have to report employees to a statewide registry that would verify a person's citizenship status. It would also require that employers fire any undocumented workers immediately. Even hospitals would have to ask patients to confirm their citizenship status and report back to the governor's office. Employers found to have broken the rules would be fined up to $10,000 per undocumented employee. And anyone found transporting undocumented people could face fel felony charges. Experts say the new law is one of the harshest anti-immigration measures in the country today. They believe this bill will be devastating to the Hispanic community and Florida in general. Senate Bill 1718 will have a detrimental effect on the economy of the state of Florida. It will increase crime since the trust between law enforcement and the immigrant community will be hampered. When you have a state that is run so much by immigrants, to say that this bill is going to affect nearly all residents, families, and businesses in the state is really a terrifying fact. Governor Ron DeSantis says the new measure was passed in anticipation of the end of Title 42. And that's the COVID-era border restriction that allowed government to expel migrants without giving them the opportunity to seek asylum. There was some expectation that the end of Title 42 could lead to an influx of people at the southern U.S. border. But that doesn't actually appear to have happened. Government officials say there has not been a surge of migrants since the policy ended a little more than 24 hours ago. You know, well, we saw less than 4,000 illegal border crossings yesterday. That is in stark contrast to what we saw last week when there were more than 10,000 migrants crossing illegally a day for three days in a row. Here in El Paso, while we didn't necessarily see a surge of migrants after Title 42, the problem is still far from over. Nonetheless, studies show that Florida is home to 800,000 undocumented people. And a lot of them work in specific sectors like construction and agriculture. And so passing a new law aimed at rooting out illegal immigration could strike at the heart of an essential labor force. And it looks like that's what's happening. It's worth saying here that there is some precedent as well. In 2011, the state of Alabama passed a punitive anti-immigration bill that went on to ravage the local economy. because. As a generation of undocumented workers left, 
crops were left to rot. And the state economy was hit with hundreds of millions of dollars in losses. As the tide of immigrant labor began rolling out of state, Dr. Addy crunched the numbers to predict the financial effect this exodus could ultimately have. Given how draconian the law was, what you get for Alabama is actually a shrinking of our GDP by about 2.3 to 10.8 billion in one year. And some people in Florida are worried about similar fallout. Um, I, I genuinely believe that this bill is economic suicide. Um, SB 1718 is a sucker punch to Florida's future, its businesses, families, immigrant communities, and their loved ones. Immigration lawyer Renata Castro has worked closely with undocumented people and knows how these measures will impact the economy in Florida. Hi, Renata. Hi, Lauren. So what is the impact when you're looking at taking this many people out of the workforce? It's important to realize that the people being taken from the workforce are the same ones that are carrying the economy of the state of Florida. These are individuals who work in agriculture, in construction, in the hospitality industry, which are the three main industries in our state. So it's not only political suicide, it is also quite detrimental for the very fragile economic ecosystem of the state of Florida, which is not very diversified and has already begun to feel the effects of this quite unreasonable and, dare I say, unconstitutional law. Wow. I mean, you said political suicide there. You said unconstitutional. Can you unpack that a little bit more? Sure. It's important to understand that the migrants are not going to be the ones mainly impacted by the outcome of this law because Ron DeSantis does not have the power to deport them. What Ron DeSantis is doing is increasing the pressure to penalize those that associate, employ, engage, rent property to transport undocumented aliens. And these are the very same people who support or supported his candidacy both to the state government and soon to the presidential office. Agricultural um, property owners, um, owners of hotels and restaurants and construction companies have been scrambling to find labor for years. And the local governments in the federal government have done very little to address the shortages and create a guest worker program. Now with this, an already frail labor force is going to fuel even more the pinch. and. Every single time a voter block gets impacted where it hurts the most, the pockets, they usually unleash their rage by changing alliances. And I wouldn't be surprised if in a month or two, when these uh, construction company owners, restaurant owners, hotel owners, who by most and large supported Ron DeSantis, start to question their alliance and whether or not Ron DeSantis is good for their business. So why would you be bringing this in now? Well, I guess Ron DeSantis is taking a, a page of Trump's strategy and putting it on steroids. On the day that Title 42 ended, um, Ron DeSantis just dominated the news media with, an, it, with news, as the one we're discussing right now, about his approach to addressing what he calls Biden's border. What Ron DeSantis doesn't talk about is the fact that those individuals coming to the border are actually following U.S. law. It's a requirement for individuals pursuing asylum protection to present themselves to a port of entry and how neither Congress nor Senate has done anything to update this rather archaic law from a time we still use dial-up internet in 1996. So it's a PR move more than anything to increase its profile as a presidential hopeful. So the timing in his mind is right. Right. And when we talk about um, immigrant workers, we often hear about the labor that they offer. Is there a way, though, that you think we can kind of recenter that conversation? Talk a little bit more about the humanity of people. It's quite challenging to address the humanity of people until someone who's anti-immigration either meets, dates, or employs someone who is without status. Um, because that's the moment that they are able to humanize that person whose mere existence has been demonized by political cycles. These are mom, dads, people who have come to the United States to give their best and their all in exchange for a better future for their families. Renata Castro, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.